Mellow Mechanic here. I have my golf cart up on jack stands uh, here today because I want to show you uh, a couple things on it. I'd like to show you the brakes and how I went about adding brakes to this golf cart because um, at least to me if you're going to modify a golf cart I think the brakes would be a good place to uh, kind of to start because golf carts Really, they're designed for the golf course, and they don't have, well, they just have crummy brakes. The brakes aren't all that good. So we're at the front of the golf cart here, and uh, you can see, you know, just the basic components. I got my rotor and my caliper there, but how I went about adding this to a stock EasyGo golf cart uh, was a little bit complicated, but uh, I'll go through the steps that I did. So. If you do want to add brakes to something, you'll you have a kind of an idea of how to do it. I just got most of the components from the Summit catalog. Uh, this Willwood single piston caliper. Uh, I like this because it's a pretty compact size, uh, but it does have a nice brake pad area. You know, the brake pad area is pretty big, uh, pretty big on it, but it doesn't have a lot of overhang right here over the rotor because I need to fit all of this inside my wheel, which is just a 12 inch, 12 inch wheel. Uh, and so that's what I did. The rotor itself is the front rotor off a 1994 Toyota Tercel, believe it or not. And the reason I went with that is because it had the right area here, but also the thickness. The thickness of the rotor was a little too big for the caliper. So I went down to a auto repair guy and he put it on his um, chewing machine and he actually took I think 50 thousandths off. The guy wasn't really happy because it took a while uh, but he took quite a bit of material off it. It had to fit between the brake pads there and I didn't want to modify the brake pads, you know, thin them up for a thicker rotor so I modified this rotor so when I do replace the pads they're, they're factory stock pads that I go in here so I don't have to modify them. But the bolt pattern was a little bit different. You can see here's the factory four bolt and so I just drilled another pattern but if you have if you start with a four bolt pattern it's easy because you can just clock it a little bit and drill four more holes. If it was a five bolt you'd have one you know just the way they line up it'd be one would be really close. But I needed one with the hat, this part right here, that's big enough where the back of this spindle needs to fit inside it. And actually I had to clearance just a little bit, uh, this piece right here, because it's actually square, it's not round, and these little corners interfered with the rotor, so I had to, had to clearance that right there. Um, and then going to actually physically mounting the caliper here. There's a couple ways, a couple ways you could do it. And this is the same way I did it uh, on my cargo bike, is the first thing you need to do is get your rotor mounted to your wheel. So you have this mounted and it's, and it's in the position, you know, put these uh, lug nuts on so it's square and it's mounted and it's not moving. And then the way I did it is go ahead and put your caliper on, but you need some clearance between the rotor and the caliper here. And what I did is right through in here is I just laid a big zip tie, and just taped the zip tie down and that gave me an, an even thickness for clearance for the rotor. And I just basically placed the rotor down and it kept my clearance up here. And then I, I centered it on the, on the rotor here and then built a plate down here. I don't know if you can see it. We'll go to the back and the back's a little more clear, but this is just kind of where I started up here. Um, if you could buy this plate, this mounting plate, the plate that holds the caliper, I would go ahead and buy that. I machined this part. And it was kind of tricky because these pins where the caliper slides on uh, need to be in the right position, but also parallel to each other. Um, if they're not parallel, the, the caliper will bind up. 
So it would be a lot easier just to buy that. I don't believe I was able to find one. That's why I made one. But this piece right here, believe it or not, can be the most complicated on the whole brake system is just how it interacts with that caliper. Uh, but once you, once you have this piece, your caliper, and it's mounted to the rotor, all you have to do is just basically connect spindle to the mounting plate. And that's what I did. Uh, you can see it's got a little bit of angle there. To come down to the spindle where I welded it on, it comes out and grabs onto the bottom of the plate there. Uh, you need enough clearance here for your rotor doesn't rub and enough clearance so your caliper can float. Alright, here we are on the back brake and you can see it's a similar setup. Uh, disc, disc right here with my caliper. I used a different caliper than I did with the, the front. Um, the reason being that I didn't need as much stopping power in the back. The surface area of the brake pads are a little bit smaller than the ones up front. The way I went about mounting these is the same as I did with the front. So these are out of the Summit catalog, but what I was looking for is a rotor that's non-ventilated, so it's thinner up here, so the caliper will fit, you know, around it. Also, this one looks like it was a five bolt at some point. No, no that's a four bolt. Uh, anyway, I had to drill the, uh, the four bolt pattern in it. Because uh, I couldn't find one with the same uh, golf cart pattern. So here we are looking at the caliper. And what I did differently on the back here than on the front is I made these two pieces. So you can see there's just a regular mount that comes straight out. Has two holes. There's one here and one on the bottom. And then I have a spacer here. And then there's a plate that mounts the caliper. The reason I did that is I can replace this plate. Say I wanted to do a different caliper or even get the calipers that are in front and put them back here. All I have to do is make a new plate. I don't have to weld anything on. They're just they're just hard mounted there. So I believe these are half inch bolts with a with a spacer and it works great. So if I needed you know a different rotor, say I wanted these calipers further out or further in, I could do that without cutting something off and re-welding something. And again, when I mentioned up front, making sure that whatever's back here has enough, uh, it's rigid enough to hold the braking force. And there was enough braking force where it actually twisted the tube. It slipped on my, right here, where I have it mounted. These two or u bolts right there actually slipped, so I had to weld the front cap on just, just to prevent that. So just make sure whatever you're putting the brake on is rigid enough to hold the braking force uh, would, be my, would be my tip here. So here we are underneath the cart and you can see how I've attached the brakes here. The factory EasyGo uses two cables. They're mechanical brakes, so there's no hydraulics at all. So they're just cables with springs back here. Um, but I wanted to keep the stock brake pedal. So this is the brake pedal right here. So what I've done is I've added this little ear off the bottom here and that actuates this cylinder right here which is my my master cylinder which is underneath here. So all of these I have that, that have this, these mounts right here. Um, I have the weld bills on. So this one right here is my clutch. That's my clutch and that's my brake right there. The, this is a 7 8 bore. This is how I did it, just weld an ear on here. And I kept this distance from this pin to this pin. That's probably about two inches or so. I didn't want to hang down on the bottom, so I kept that pretty short. But this ratio right here and this diameter brake seems to work pretty good. I got, I got a lot of brake uh, and good modulation with those. I have no idea if this is going to show up or not, but anyway, we are next to the motor, kind of in the engine compartment here, and what I want to show you is this piece right here, with this knob on it. That is a single circuit proportioning valve, so this line comes from that master cylinder I just showed you, and it comes down here and it goes into a T that is just before this proportioning valve. 
and I have this plumbed backwards. And, and what I mean by that is I have full pressure from the master cylinder going to the back brakes. And the reason I did that is there's more weight on the back of the cart than there is on the front. So I needed full, full pressure on the back and I needed to dial down the front a little bit because it kept locking up on me. Plumbing it that way gave me a good uh, system to modulate it so I can turn down the front brakes and prevent them from skidding. So now they're pretty much equalized and uh, when I hit the brakes they, they I stopped very very well uh, but the front brakes have stopped skidding on me. Alright so moving on back that piece right there that I've illuminated that's the T so the master cylinder comes in there this is the rear brake line and it comes to a T and it goes off to the left and off to the right. And I have found that these little flex lines are super handy because I can go from, say, this T right here all the way down to the caliper. And they could just sit here and flex and uh, I don't need any hard mounts. And, uh, and it works really, really well. But you can see down there, it goes through a mount I made with a grommet. So that holds it on that end. And then this is held on this end. And same thing on this side. It just goes around the exhaust there. But I really like these flex lines. And they got a little, I think that's a dash three or a little tiny uh, A and fitting on them. And they work very, very, very well. So on the front here, I've plumbed it pretty much the same way I did the back. Is You can't see it, but underneath this guy right here, there's a T. And then again, I just use these flex lines that go from that T. And they come all the way back and go into the caliper right here. Um, so they're nice and long. They don't have a lot of uh, stretch to them, uh, but they're nice and flexible. So I go from there all the way to my caliper. So that's just kind of a quick and easy way to do it. And they go on both sides. So I hope you like this video. And if there's anything else you guys want to see on this golf cart or any of the other projects that I've done videos on, let me know in the comments and, uh, and I'll get those going because I enjoy uh, sharing my projects and showing you guys what I've done and I like the feedback too I like that you guys are watching them so anyway uh, thank you for watching